Hi everybody. In the last video in our series on how to use our online app, what we're going to do is talk specifically about uh, GES and Omega Partial for Repeated Measures Designs. And so GES is Generalized Eta Squared. It's a form of Eta Squared that's supposed to correct for problems with Repeated Measures Designs. And so uh, for eta squared repeated measures designs, eta tends to be biased upwards because you're losing the subject variance, as you can see in our other videos where we talk about sum of squares total. So the correction on this is to help deal with that fact. And um, it is in the easy library in R if you want to calculate those and you're using R. The other thing we're going to try is omega partials for repeated measures design. So this really covers like re the repeated measures design group partials for GES and Omega. So let's start with GES for partials in a completely repeated measures design. So this is where all of the pieces are repeated. And I have a couple of little outputs for you here, mostly JASP and SPSS. And what we want to do is find uh, the pieces of variance that we're interested in. So let's start with degrees of freedom model and degrees of freedom error. So over here, that's what we're going to do with the one for forward strength. So it's just 1 and 157. Okay. Sum of squares model, and then sum of squares subject. So sum of squares model is just right here next to the name of your independent variable. Okay, so 51184. However, sum of squares subject is a little harder, but it's usually here in the between subjects effects box under residual. So 76988. Now for this, what we want to do is enter all three error terms. So this one only covers two-way designs at the moment, but we want to enter the residual for all three of our F statistics. So main effect one, main effect two, and the interaction. So we got 8319. 6074. Okay, and then for the interaction, I've got 5403. Okay. And we want to make sure we're using sum of squares because, as you'll see across all these different tests, sometimes it's mean squares, sometimes it's sum of squares. In this one, it's all sum of squares. Now I want to use F here, so I got 965.99 or 966 if I round up. And we're going to keep alpha as 0.05. If you hit calculate, what you'll see up here is the uh, corrected eta squared, so eta 2g, and that's 0.35. It also gives you the count confidence interval around 0.35. Okay. So we would say this effect size is greater than zero, but let me really show you what's happening here is uh, eta squared, or partial eta squared here, is 0.86, and so is omega. And so what's happening is that the sum of squares sort of uh, subject variance is getting ignored for those, but it uh, obviously is overestimating eta. Um, and so the GES is a correction on that. And when I say obviously overestimating eta, uh, we would probably say that 0.86 is a little unreasonable. And then we have some research in our lab that shows that repeated measures designs are particularly susceptible to overestimations of population ADA. Um, and so using generalized ADA is a good idea. If you want to see how that happens in the background, what you can see is that it's now being sum of squares model over sum of squares model plus sum of squares error as sum of squares model over all of the error terms, so for all three variables, and the sum of squares subject variance. And so that's really actually creating a sum of squares total um, because we're adding up all of the different error var variances. So this is almost like um, a full eta squared. Now, I can show you um, partial eta mixed, but uh, with the warning that you pretty much cannot do it from a, a um, program, a factory program, because in a mixed design, um, it is very difficult to find the subject variance. So let me open a different window here. So this is a mixed ANOVA. It's a three-way mixed ANOVA. It's supposed to be two ways, but we almost, um, it was run wrong. So where is the subject variance in all of this? Because this is the residual for just group. And then um, these are the residuals here for those individual pieces. 
So what you don't see in a um, in one of these point and click programs is where to get some some square subject from. So when you start mixing those designs together, um, some of square subject becomes tricky. Now you could use some of squares uh, error for the between subjects variance. That's often the same thing. Um, with the warning that this partial is for the repeated measures component and not the between subjects component. So what we could do, uh, I closed the wrong window, sorry about that, is we could say, okay, let's try just this one, right? So what we wanna do is take some uh, degrees of freedom model, right? So that's one and 156. My sum of squares for the repeated measures component of the model, which is 50861 if I round up. If I treat the between subjects variance as the sum of squares subjects, so 6, 4, 2, 5, 1. I'm sorry, my little dog is like trying to get up in my lap. <laughs> and then my residual for the repeated measures component is 8, 3, 0, 2, if I round it. My F statistic is here. So 956, and now I don't really recommend rounding these, I'm just doing that so you don't have to suffer from me doing decimals, and now I'm gonna hit calculate. Okay. And so that could be a good estimate for our effect size for ADA, uh, population ADA, or a, I'm sorry, ADA 2G, generalized effect size, and we'll see that it's way lower than the um, effect size estimate for just ADA, so we're probably right on the money. And so the real pro the real issue becomes the sum of square subject, um, which is in the between subjects box. That is also true of SPSS. That's how it looks. All right. The other option we can do is omega for partial repeated uh, for omega partial for repeated measures designs, and this will work for repeated measures designs or mixed designs when the factor is repeated measures. So we didn't make a separate one here because the formula is approximately the same. So let's look at that bad boy. So it's degrees of freedom model times the mean square for the model minus the mean square error, uh, divided by the sum of squares for model plus error plus subject plus subject. So we gotta find that subject variance again. So let's go back, close this one out, and look here. Now the nice thing about JASP is it does give you this mean square for subject. Well, let's look at SPSS and see if we can figure it out from there. Okay. Um, first thing I want to do, let me hide this window so we can make this just a touch bigger for, for the screen. It's, uh, let's do BSG this time. So we've got 1 and 156. It's coming back over here. So 1 and 156. Mean square model for for the this variable is here, so fourteen nine nine five if I round up. Okay. Mean squared error for BSG, it's here, so thirty five point five two. And one of the key factors here is making sure you're using either mean square or sum sum of squares. So this one's mean square and matching the error term to the right uh, IV. So uh, a completely repeated measures design, each error term, each IV gets a separate error term. Okay. So we got 35.52. What else do we need? We need mean square of subject. So that's a tricky one, but it's over here in the between subjects box, which in normal output is just below it. We kind of stuck it over here on the side so we could see it. And that is going to be, okay, we want mean square subject, which is here. Um, here under air, so uh, 493. <clears throat> okay. Now I know it said error, but remember that that line should say subject, so mean square for subject. Um, so let me go back here. So it says error, but it's error for between subjects part, which is the subjects part, so it's mean square for subjects. And that's the trickiest part. So let's get some of squares of the model. So this time I'm gonna go over to BSG and pull the sum of squares. Now it's the same because my degrees of freedom is one. So we got four, uh, 14, nine, nine, five. 
And now sum of squares error. So sum of squares error. So sum of squares error here okay. is five five four one. Sorry, I don't think there was a decimal there. Okay. Which is different than mean squared error, which is we said was 3552, right? So sum of squares error versus uh, mean squared error. Okay. And we need one last number here, oops, which is the sum of squares for subject. So now this term here. So 76908. Oh, 76908. Oh, now, we could, if you give us these numbers, calculate some of these for you, but um, we erred on the side of asking you to enter each one um, because it helps with the, the formula component so that uh, if there is a mismatch, we can let you know. Let's so calculate and click over here to summary. And so that tells us the partial omega for this uh, repeated measures components 0.15 and it ranges from about 0.06 to 0.26 and so that includes is partial omega which may or may not match the full omega that is listed on um, JASP over here okay so this is partialed out whereas I think JASP the version they're doing is full omega okay so they're treating each one of these lines as a separate little mini ANOVA which is not what we're doing. We are calculating the partial defects given everything else. So those numbers will not match. But then it still gives you the uh, definition of that effect size and um, tells you if the confidence interval includes zero. You can always look at um, the code here. And so this one is partial omega for repeated measures. We've also talked about the two GES functions and so that concludes all of our help videos on how you find the information you need from a popular program to enter into our app.